Okay. And gentlemen. Can everyone hear me? Good evening, Kellen. Thank you. How are we all? Yeah, I'm all right. Okay, thank you. That means you can hear me. Uh, my name is Katum Sime Kellen. And uh, today, let me explain more about me. I'm, with, I'm one of the facilitators for this workshop. I am a teacher of ICT and physics since 2013. I work at Yakasinga Che. Che means Center for Higher Education, for those that don't know it. And it is located in Shema. I'm a new curriculum master trainer too. And the, today, we are going, today is the last day of our workshop. We have been having a seven day virtual workshop for teachers where, whereby we have been demystifying the new curriculum. And today is the last day, is the seventh day, whereby we are going to look at the scheme of work, lesson plan and preparation for teaching. This is not new to us, especially it is also linked in the old curriculum. We've ever looked at the scheme of work, we've ever looked at the lesson plan, and we've always prepared to teach. We've always prepared ourselves to teach. So today, we are going to look at basically what is in the CBC, in the competence-based curriculum. Mr. Mkarele? Mr. Mkalele. Mr. Rogers. Oh. oh. Yes, I hear I see my screen. Yes, I'm seeing your screen, sir. So our session outcomes for this workshop today basically are these ones here below. One. We are going to understand the basics of preparing to teach. Okay. What are the basics of preparing to teach? So by the end of the session, we'll be able to understand that. Two, to develop some core competence scheme of work and lesson plan. And that one is very, very important. Hmm? because our curriculum that we are dealing with today is competence-based curriculum. So our scheme of work and lesson plan that we are going to handle is the competence-based one. So we will be able to develop a sample competence scheme of work and lesson plan. Then three, to understand how to use local or low cost materials for effective teaching and learning. This one is very important for us all in our different subjects. Here we are not talking about ICT alone as a subject, it affects all the subjects that we, we are going to teach. So we should be in position to understand how we can locally if possible, how we can improvise at low cost the materials or the teaching learning aids for our learning to be effective. Thank you. So, so ladies and gentlemen, like the way I said, that we are going to be developing is uh, a sample scheme of work. Uh, here, we are going to first understand that for the effective teaching 
and learning to take place, there must be proper preparation. So now a simple question is, now this preparation, eh? what is involved in this preparation? As a teacher, when you're going to teach, what is involved in this preparation? Now, now when we look at the old, uh, at the old curriculum, uh, when we can remind ourselves, we used to know, and we still know, that for a teacher to go to class and teach, there is what we call tools of teaching, or what a teacher needs to go with in the class for effective teaching and learning. And in this, in this preparation, the teacher needs the scheme of work. The teacher needs lesson plan. The teacher needs lesson notes. The teacher needs teaching learning aids. The teacher needs records of work. The teacher needs record of marks and the rest as we know them. But today, as we prepare to look at how to teach, we want to look at the scheme of work. What is a scheme of work? It is, uh, let us look at these quick questions and we answer them together. What is a scheme of work? After knowing that they are the tools that we need as teachers to go and carry out the effective teaching and learning, now we are asking, what is a scheme of work? Members, can we answer this? Hey, members, you can be able to put up your hand. You can give it a try. I can see Aisha, Ebenezer Classic Senior School, uh, Eddie, Jerome, Nalwanga, Colum Samuel, Colum David, and Proceed. You can be able to give it a, a, a go. What is the scheme of work as the first is asking? Um, you can put up your hand or you can unmute and give your input. Members, let's answer this. What is a scheme of work? Uh -huh. Maybe let us just be choosing. Eh? Hey, mm. Because all the members on the on call should be able to participate. Uh, exactly. Can start with Aisha. Mm. Aisha, you can tell us what you think. Hello, Aisha. <laughs> Okay, let us get somewhere. Okay, Samuel. Hello. Yes, I, I see Prosy. Yes, I see Prosy. Mm. Yes, yes. Prosy. Yes, please. Good evening. Good evening. Now, ask him a question. I would say is a, a plan that outlines all the learning to be covered over a given yeah. period of time. It could be timely, like the same way we usually make a lesson, uh, sorry, a scheme of work for the term. So I would say it is a plan that outlines all the learning that is to be covered over a given period of time. Thank you. I hope you're able to hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Mr. Mkari, are we going to record this somewhere? Like the way we would do previously? Uh, I think we shall record uh, at another time when we are discussing the other section. Eh? For now, let us just be getting the feedback and we, and we proceed. Um, yeah, you wanted okay. me to keep writing it's their okay. responses? 
Okay. It would be better, but it's okay. It's okay also what you have decided. Okay, okay. okay. Um, Madam President, thank you for your input. Is there any other member who, ha who has another input about the scheme of work? Do we have any other member? You can see Samuel has, has unmuted. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, according mm. to me, a scheme of work is that document that you prepare to enable you meet that targeting plan or the objectives. Okay, the document that you prepare to enable you meet some specific objectives eh, on your some, particular mm -hmm. subject. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, he, Mr. Samuel, thank you very much. You've talked about objectives. And that one is a very key point to note because when we look at the old at the, the, the old curriculum, we would have a part for the objectives. But it, ahead there, we are going to see what has been replaced in this new curriculum, especially in the scheme of work, what has been replaced. Objectives, the the content of work. So, according to me, a scheme of work is a professional document that highlights the chronological flow of content. Members, can you hear me? I seem to be having some background noise. Can you hear me? Yes, we are hearing you. Okay. So let us look at another question. Another question is why may you need to make a scheme of work? I mean, after all, if I'm a senior teacher and I know my information of head, do I need a scheme of work? Members, this is up to you. Let us answer this. Why make a scheme of work? You can see Mr. Sendegea. Mm, he's welcome. Yes, go ahead. Why make a scheme of work, Mr. Sendegea? Why? Mm. Mm. Thank why? You so why? Much for uh, mm. First of all, it mm. helps you to plan effectively depending on the coverage you are supposed to handle. So that you know how you will be in position to handle the work um, so that in one way or the other, you do not mm. miss out the coverage you are supposed to handle in a particular term. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Another another member? Another one? Do we need us? Do we need? Mm. Mr. Jerome, okay, Prosy has put up her hand. Yes, yes, Prosy. Yeah, we usually make a scheme of work in order to make sure you get the required materials, teaching and learning materials mm. that you require in the teaching process. So that you don't run up and down along the way. Okay. Thank you. That is very important. Thank you. Thank you so much. Another one, because we want to know why, why, why make a scheme of work? Is it of any importance? Let's let's look at uh, at at reasons why we make a scheme of work. Is there importance of making the scheme of work? Aisha. Aisha. 
Aisha, please unmute. I can see your hand up, even somewhere. Uh, thank you so much. Mm. It helps us to develop a lesson plan because without a scheme of work, you cannot come up with a lesson plan. Thank you thank very you. much. Mm, that is very good. Thank you. Another uh, one? I, also, we can... mm. I think... For example, in the department, you may be true. In case of your absentia, in case you are not there, then uh, that scheme mm -hmm. of work can enable your friend, who is your department, mm -hmm. to continue from where uh, maybe you are disturbed. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's okay. That one is also okay. Uh, another one, or oh, we can wrap up. I think we Marian, can, we can go the Marian, next question. Uh, <laughs> Marion has something to say. Yes. Thank you. I mm. think preparing a scheme of work ensures mm. that the teaching and learning process flows mm. logically. And it can mm. also help us to prevent momentum to drag. Mm during the teaching and learning process. Okay. Okay, it's okay. Thank you. Uh, maybe if, uh, if we can wrap up on that, there is... Hello. Hello. Yes, David. Thank you so much. I, we can hear you. Yes, I just want to substantiate like you already said, uh, a scheme of work is a chronological flow of what is supposed to go on in class. It is followed by uh, a planning session where we need mm. to have a lesson plan which someone has already given us. And what is critical mm. here is once we mm. have this lesson plan, it helps a teacher so much to manage time because, you know, time mm. in a lesson is very critical. So it helps us manage time. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I want to thank you very much. But that point of time management would come in the part of lesson plan. Why do we need a lesson plan which is ahead? I thank you for being a critical participant. Uh, thank you. Thank you for being observant. Maybe if I can wrap up on the scheme of work, I can top up on what other members have said. Uh, the scheme of work guides the program of study. And uh, as, uh, as another member said that it helps the teacher to draw a lesson plan. It is very, very, very correct. And also, as another member said, it allows the teacher to seek for re relevant material for implementation stabilize and learning process it also helps the teacher to complete specific topics within a given period and it is also for evaluation purposes and other points as we have mentioned so now we can look at another question we have differences between a based or do not its best scheme of work. Here, I want us to outline the differences because I believe we we have we have at least been exposed to this new competence based uh, scheme of work, and of course the old or the old knowledge based scheme of work. We already we want to look at the differences between these two. Do you think there are any differences between these two or they are the same? Members, another question is over to you. Differences between competence-based scheme of work, scheme of hey, Members, you have been scheming in your, even in the old curriculum. What do you think are the differences between the old scheme and the new scheme we are going to be making in the new curriculum? 
uh, who has not spoken? Jerome, have you spoken? Not yet, sir. Good afternoon, mm. everyone. Good afternoon, too. Uh, uh, what I can observe is that uh, in the CBC, mm. what we used to call objectives are now called the learning outcomes. The learning outcomes have replaced the objectives. Thank you. Yeah. Mm, mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That one is very important. Thank you. Another another observation. Another observation. Uh, Mr. Muhammad. Uh, Edith. So Mr. Jerome says the objectives are, are going to become learning outcomes. That's what he says. Yes. Mm -hmm. OK, maybe we could ask them, is there anyone who knows what we used to put in the old scheme? What the columns, which columns were we putting? I hope members have been scheming. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, we... Yes, I think uh, with the old one, mm. uh, some of the columns include the, the week when uh, mm. that was to be covered, the period, you have the topic mm. itself, then you will have the content or subtopic, mm. the breakdown. You will mm. have the objectives. And mm. Lastly, you may have the comments. Okay, okay, thank you. We have, uh, we are seeing another hand up. Yes, Muhammad. Muhammad. Hello, Muhammad. I've just joined. I've just joined. This is my first att attendance. Now, You're welcome. in the first column, we used to put in the first column, in the old culture, in the first column, we used to put the week. Then we went to mm -hmm. time, topic. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, from okay, topic, it is week first. And uh, time period, mm. period. Mr. Muhammad, we can't hear you properly. I don't, I don't know if others are hearing you okay. well. And the network is breaking. I was kind of here. The network is breaking, breaking. Yeah, you can hear Muhammad. Mm. Yes, I was. Mm. I was. I was saying that in the old curriculum, mm. the arrangement was week, mm. week mm. went to period, mm. then topic, subtopic. Mm. Mm. Subtopic, we went where? Something, the network broke along the way we didn't see after uh, subtopic. Yeah, you were saying okay. that. Mm. I th Maybe I think can they harmonize they on that. Yes. Mm. There is a network yeah. problem. Miss, Mr. Muhammad, allow me harmonize on that. In the in the in the old in the old in the old scheme of work, we had the week, we had the date. We had uh, the topic or subtopic. We had the content. We had the objectives. There are any teaching and learning, teaching methods, then teaching aids, references, and remarks. I hope members are noting that down. Then in the new scheme of work in the competence-based curriculum, we have the week, 
we have the period, we have the competence, we have the learning outcomes, we have the teaching learning resources, uh, methodology, references, and comments. Thank you, Mr. Rogers, for bringing this up. So basically, there is a difference. There is a Uh, hello, Madam Kellen. A difference you, between the the all this, the knowledge based curriculum and that is breaking. It was so, it has also been breaking a bit, but it's okay. Not very much. Oh, sorry. Mm. Now you can hear me. Yes. Okay, thank you. So members, can uh, are you getting this information on your screens? Yes. yes, members. Yes, I think. it is breaking. Okay. Mm, it's okay. Uh, we are looking at it's the. Okay now. The, okay, thank you. We are looking at the old scheme of work. What we had in the old scheme of work, the sample. Mm? Can you see that sample? Whereby we have the class term subject and then period topic content objectives references comments we can all see that yes 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 okay then when we look at the new content based curriculum here we see the name of the teacher, class subjects, and term. Then we have the week period. That one is still the same like the old topic is still remaining. But now there is something very important that we should that we should take note of. There is this competence. Hmm? Competence. Can we see? Can we all see that? Because previously we had the content. Now we are seeing competence. And this one is very important. This competence here that we put here, all the way aligns from the syllabus. When we go in the beginning, when we were having the introduction part, we looked at we looked at the, the items that will work hand in hand. For us to have the effective teaching and learning. And among which we looked at the syllabus, the, the, the teacher's guide, and the learner's book. Mm -hmm. And when you look at all those three, you will find that, irrespective of the subject, every subject, you find that the competence is eh, the competence in the syllabus, the teacher's guide, the learner's book is the same so we should follow that then here we have the learning outcomes and uh, teaching and learning resources methodology mm. uh, the teaching learning resources we are also so slighter there in the old uh, scheme of work and methodology and then then reference. So at this point, I think we can see that really there is some difference between the old scheme of work and the new scheme of work. Members, can you hear me? Oh, still my yes. network is breaking. Okay, we thank can, you. We can hear you. Mm. Thank you. We can hear you. Thank you. Okay, we proceed. Yes, we proceed. Mm. Now, members, when we are going to prepare for teaching, we said that uh, it is very important that we look at the the, the learning resources. Eh? 
the teaching and learning resources or the teaching and learning aids. So it is very important that we prepare in advance. We look at the resources that are cost effective. Uh, we don't want to go to, uh, to, to our administrators and start as yes, if they can manage well and good. But as teachers, it is important that we prepare for a lesson which involves uh, uh, low cost teaching and learning resources. Availability of teaching resources can make college. Okay. While lack of resources can make it difficult. Uh, this new curriculum, we need the learning resources. When they are available, our curriculum will be easy. Implementing it, but without it, because it's no longer knowledge based, it will make it difficult. Some of the resources are factually made and costly. So our focus should be, should be to make curriculum implementation as affordable as possible. So do, we should not look at the so costly resources that will make us fail the learners. No, let us look at the low cost resources, the environment, uh, environment available resources, yes, that can make us move ahead with this collision. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Okay, uh, there is someone who is saying that we have forgotten the period. Uh, the periods are there. That is Mr. in the chat. I can see in the chat he was saying we have forgotten the periods. Mm. The periods are there on the scheme, yeah. Uh, so we are now mm. going to look at the lesson plan. Uh, let us also discuss the lesson plan and then we, we yeah. At, at five, I expect some students to join us. We are going to be having demo lessons. So we have around 17 minutes. Let us discuss mm. the lesson plan as well. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, you can take them through this slide and then I'll it's, show it's the okay. Plan. Yes, members, thank you. Thank you for, for your participation so far. Uh, we are done with the scheme of work, but along the way, we are going to have members take us through the demo list and how we can prepare the scheme of work and the lesson plan. So now we are on the lesson plan. Members, what is a lesson plan? What is a lesson plan? What is a lesson plan? Okay, maybe Madam Kellen. Yes. Uh, as they think of a lesson plan, let me first, uh, before we leave the scheme of work, let mm. me first uh, display here. There are some mem good members who already did, we gave them an assignment. Mm. Uh, to do a scheme of work. I don't know if you can be able to see my screen. Mm, I can see it, but uh -huh. I'm going to open some of them here. Um, let mm. me see. Um, uh, let me open two of them um, mm. so that uh, we can just look at and we see whether they did them well. Mm. Um, and we can ask them how they made them. So there is uh, this one here for chemistry. Mm. Is going to open. Uh, I hope you can see it. Are you able to see? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so this was Thank made by you. Mr. Jerome. Mm. And um, uh, it is about chemistry. Uh, I think Mr. Mm. Jerome is online. He can tell us. Yes. How did he, he come up tell with us. this? What mm. was he referring to? Mm. Uh, Mr. Jerome. Can you tell us about how you made this and uh, uh, which tools we're using and uh, how what we're referring to to make mm. this? Mm. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Rogers and members. Mm. Uh, this scheme of work was, of course, based on um, 
the chemistry curriculum mm. and uh, uh, using that chemistry curriculum plus the learner's book and the teacher's guide, I was able to see the components, the components of the schemes, of the scheme of work according to this new curriculum. I followed that one systematically and I was able to arrive at this. But uh, apart from that, uh, I had also taught the senior one. Mm. Time, although I had not trained the area, but I had consulted my, my fellows who had trained a bit and they guided me. And of course, being a teacher, uh, I was able to grasp this content quite easily. So th there is no much. I didn't read the uh, very many encyclopedias. It, I just used the syllabus book plus the TG and then the runner's book. Mm. Yes. I can see here you put activities of integration. In the other one, the other old scheme we were putting there end of term exams. Mm. But here you have put activities of integration and you are putting the Zim. Yes, exactly. Topic, which I understand. And about. yet, yet, yeah. yet the theme comes in the, the lesson plan. Mm, but it is also here, it is the, mm. like in the syllabus books. Eh? Uh, even if I have any, they put they put those those the themes are there. Mm, it's fine. Uh, I I hope I'm on. Someone was calling me here. So he was referring mm. to this, and then he was using this to, to make the other one. OK. Uh, mm. There's another okay. one. Hello, you're breaking, breaking. Also, there's another one. I see another scheme. Mm. OK, this is the lesson plan. This is a lesson plan. This is a lesson plan. Mm -hmm. This is a lesson plan. Let me. Um, yeah, so we were looking at this is in the Google Classroom. Members, please. Um, the Google Classroom is going to remain open. You can always get some of these materials. I think this one submitted a lesson plan. It's okay, let us go to the lesson plan now. We have discussed the scheme well. So let the members come in with the lesson plan now. Okay, um, members we are still on the part of lesson plan. We are asking what is a lesson plan? And we looked at the, at the scheme of work as a professional judgment, which highlights the chronological flow of Content. Now, here we are looking, helps the teacher to draw the lesson plan. When I can remember, but now we are looking at the lesson plan. What is a lesson plan? What is a lesson plan? Yes, Fred, I can see your hand up. Thank you, Madam. A lesson plan is a mm. document which is prepared showing mm. how a lesson is going to be conducted, stipulating time it will have to take and various activities which will be involved during the lesson. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for the input. Another input? Another input? I choose a friend. Yeah. Hello, Richard. Richard, you're welcome. Tell us. Hello, Richard. Can you hear us?
Hello, Richard. Yes, Justin, you can do. Oh, thank you. Yes, Madam Justin, tell us. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Members, let us let us discuss this quickly. Our time is is, is going. Mm. Um, a lesson plan. Normally, what I know about lesson plans is, in the even in the old curriculum, mm. during the when we are in the teacher training school practice, some people end doing lesson plans on school practice. The rest mm. they just go to class because they think they are experts. Eh? Mm. Uh, Mr. Ogisha has put up his hand. Mr. Ogisha, when did you lesson plan? When did you last <laughs> lesson plan? Uh, I lost lesson plan in, uh, in April. April. Uh, basically, sure? in, a in a nutshell, mm -hmm. uh, a lesson plan is a teacher's detailed description of uh, the course of instruction or the activities to be done during the lesson. Eh? Good. That is basically what I can give. Okay. And, and Teacher Rogers, Teacher Rogers, honestly, uh, in yeah. my school, in my school, uh, lesson plans were very, very uh, important. And as the dos, I used to make sure we make them. Personally, I made them because they they really they really help. They really help. Huh? They really help you to be very systematic eh, during the teaching process. Eh? If you don't have a lesson plan, you can teach something and then uh, perhaps end up discussing stories during the lesson or diverting or moving away from the course. Thank you. It's okay. okay. Thank you. Mr. Rogers. Uh, yes. Uh, the receptionist, when I wanted to save it, though it is outside this, allow allow me say it, and then we mm. can contribute because I feel my heart is not at rest. Allow mm. me, allow me, welcome my boss. He's here with us. One of our deputies, our deputy for academics, Mr. Wakoli Charlie. Okay. He's here with us. Mr. Yeah, Alphonse, well. tell us we welcome you and thank you for at attending our session. Okay. Mm. So we can proceed now? Yes. Oh, my network is breaking. You can proceed. There is this last question here about uh, the key learning outcomes. Values, generic mm. skills, and cross cutting issues. These were some of bring the pillars. It, bring of it, the, bring it. Some of the pillars of the new curriculum. And how do we take mm. care of those when we are lesson planning? Yeah, because uh, if we, we are to have these things as part of our lessons, it's better we plan that they are there. They will not just come by chance. How do you plan? Mm. Uh, I, I think members remember those things of key learning outcomes the values, mm. the genetic skills, and cross-cutting issues. How do you take care of them? Maybe we could get someone to tell us, and uh, mm. another one can tell us about the components. Uh, mm. plan. Then we look at some samples. Mm. Mm. It's okay. Um, I, uh, Madam Justin, I don't know if she can be able to say something on that. And, um, I uh, can see um, Mr. Ojambo Job. Mm. Daniel. Mm. This is uh, Teacher Ojambo Job. Mm. Mm. Uh, I think I, you wanted, or oh, you had requested me to talk about uh, the key components of the lesson plan. Mm. Uh -huh. Now, I don't know whether there's a very big change uh, between uh, the lesson plans of uh, the knowledge-based the, the knowledge curriculum and the competence-based curriculum. But uh, what I know about a lesson, a lesson plan, 
it must uh, have the class that uh, that subject is to be told. It should also have the subject to the teacher's name. However, it should also have uh, it should have the the time interval and uh, the activities to be to be carried on uh, right away from uh, the side of the teacher and then the ones of uh, the student. Then the stages of the lesson development. Is it uh, the start of the lesson? What about uh, during, is it the introduction? Is it the, the, the lesson development? The real process of teaching and learning? Then the lesson conclusion. And what time is each or is each of those uh, steps supposed to be carried out? Then uh, thereafter, we shall need the remark to evaluate uh, the lesson. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. you have talked about it all. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Madam Kellen. Yes, sir. I think let me show here uh, some sample, then we discuss when we are looking at it because I'm seeing our time has gone. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay. There is uh, this one we already gave. We had actually we had this activity here. Are you seeing this, the screen on the activity? No, no, there is nothing on the screen. Are you sure? I am looking at the Maybe screen. Maybe other members. Let me try to share again. Make oh. sure you didn't swipe away. You should swipe to the right place. Okay. Are you seeing the screen? All right. Yes. We are seeing, we are seeing the screen, sir. So this activity, mm -hmm. we already gave it actually last time because we knew we, you couldn't do it now during the Zoom. We gave it in our Google Classroom mm -hmm. last time and we told the members to prepare a scheme of work and a lesson plan. And uh, we have mm -hmm. looked at the schemes. Um, there is a member here. Let me try to download this one. Uh, I think I've already downloaded it. Um, we can pass look at this one. So this one here is called the Wanyoto Julius. Mm. And he has a, a put his school here, his name, uh, the duration, number of learners, boys, girls, the subject, the theme, the topic, the learning outcomes have been put. The prerequisite knowledge, that is what learners are expected. I don't know whether Julius mm. is on call. I would tell him to explain his lesson plan. Then he, uh, he has put some teaching learning materials to be used, and then the reference to be used, including the new curriculum books, the learner's book, and the teacher's guide. Then he comes here and he does a lesson flow. He has a, a stage where he has a scenario and he's greeting learners, he tells the learners, he gives them a scenario. So he doesn't go direct to, to introduce a topic, but he's, he gives them some kind of scenario to usher them into, into the topic. Then from there, there is something like a key question, probing question to identify some businesses around the community. And uh, he tells them for considering, now these are some of the responses he expects. And uh, this side, you can see the, uh, the, the assessment strategies. By the way, the, the, the lesson flow is really changing because there is a teacher, the stage, teacher's activity, learner's activity, and the assessment, the triangulation is being catered for. And mm. it's telling the, here that you move around the class to check the learner's ability to mention the businesses. And then, um, so yeah, so then there is hand objects with care. This one could be a cross-cutting issue or something <laughs> because you have to be careful. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, so this is entrepreneurship and it is harmonization. And then he, there is also a scheme of work. This scheme of work, he, when we had combined both, also he has a scheme of work here. We looked at the scheme already. Now, there is another lesson plan. Maybe before I, I go to another lesson plan, Members, mm. do you have any comment regarding Mr. Julius's lesson plan? Lesson plan. 
Uh, any member to critique this lesson plan? Is it fine? Uh, uh, is there something that you think is missing? Oh, this is uh, very good. We just need to clap for him. <laughs> hey. uh, Shalom. Uh, I, I don't know whether if you, you have not spoken to a, a, a teacher, please, you can be able to give us something. Um, Agnes, Mr. Sendege, out of 10, how many? Yesterday you gave the other runner two out of 10. Let me hope this one you're giving him. <laughs> <from the mass. laughs> How is this lesson plan? Actually, his lesson plan is okay. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because you are supposed at least to ensure that you have reasonable activities. Mm. Mm. You to assess the learners accordingly. Yeah, that is what I have to say. Mr. Rogers. Yes. Mr. Rogers. Uh, good afternoon, all of you members. I'm calling in from Kabale. Mm. You're welcome. I'm happy with this kind of lesson plan because mm. from the other activity, previous activity, we were asking how do we include key learning outcomes, var generic skills, values, and close cutting issues. Mm. As, as in relation mm. to what he has portrayed, we have been able to see where he embeds in the key learning outcomes, we have seen a close cutting issue. We have seen the values included that is in the group work, uh, sharing, mm. collaboration, and so on. So mm. I'm happy I credit this lesson plan. Madam Agnes, I am a Satrina. You're talking like an expert in the CBC. <laughs> <laughs> this one must be a master trainer. <laughs> I'm happy for you. <laughs> okay. Now, remember. Thank you. Thank you. We are going to be sharing many lesson plans. There is a platform called Shareability. Uh, we are going mm. to be uploading some of these lesson plans. There is a, another sample which is there, which was from mathematics, which we got from NCBC. So, Shareability website has many papers and uh, resources, even for the new country. And we are going to be putting many activities of integration. So please always refer and always share, share with your other colleagues. Um, now there's another lesson plan here, which I'm getting from the shareability website here. Good innovation. I, mm, mm, mm. And I want us yes. to, to look at it okay. as well. Uh, by the mm. way, I'm right now I'm in Igang at Bishop Way. We are going to be having a, a master tra mm. another training, which is going to happen uh, starting tomorrow uh, for senior mm. three teachers. Okay, mm. so the, let us look at this one also. Remember, as our time has gone, it is supposed to be time for demo lessons. Um, so th there's another lesson plan here. This one was uh, given to us uh, during the one of the trainings. So here, they also a teacher puts here some rationale uh, why the why the lesson, the prerequisite knowledge, the learning materials. And then there is the teacher activity, learner's activity. Uh, if you are not speaking, please, you can mute. Okay, so teacher's activity, learner's activity, and then there is the indicators to uh, learning stroke assessment. So you have to get, take care of triangulation. Uh, put here what, what you are going to be doing to assess the learners. And also, um, you have to have the expected answers to the activities you are giving. And they are using scenarios. We have to be thinking of scenarios. Don't just bring a topic and power it to the, the learners, throw it to the learners. They should be able to uh, find a way of probing them to, 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 to discover. Then this was mathematics. I can see when the teacher tried to put some of the, uh, the materials, the teaching learning materials, how they'll be used. Uh, this was a mathematics lesson. It is a, a long one. Yeah, members, you can be able to get this scheme from the shareability here. So there's just a recap down here. But also one thing I saw on this scheme, there is what called worksheet for learners. Remember, the learners are supposed to be in the groups and work. So prepare the worksheets if possible and print them out if your school has those resources, such that during the group, you give them these worksheets, which they will fill in to guide their discussion. There is that worksheet and there's another worksheet here. So the worksheets should be part of the lesson planning. 
Uh, Madam Kellen, I uh, hope yes. you have got me on that. I've got you, but my screen is not showing anything. I don't know if members... You, if scroll, the members are you have scrolled to the gallery. <laughs> members, <laughs> other members, are you seeing my work? Yes. yes. Madam Kellen, you scroll like this it. among the username. You have seen it? Let me see. You, you scroll through the participants. I think you have switched to a participant area. Uh, so okay. He has now so come. Okay. Eh? Mm. okay, so the worksheets are important. If you tell the learners to go in the groups, you have to give them some guidance on how they will discuss and just down their points. Anyway, that is the, what is there. Now, members, our time has really gone. Um, let us wrap up on this, and then we are going to go to the demo lessons. Um, we are going to have uh, one or two members doing a demo lesson. Uh, Mr. Jerome, uh, you prepare in like five minutes. You are going to be the first person to do a demo lesson for us here. Uh, you are going to take like 15 to 20 minutes. Then we shall critique your lesson and see whether you, it is really learner centered. So, Madam Kellen, uh, you, try, you, you wrap up with this. But I think I'm still having challenges with my screen. Hey, uh, let me let me try to share again, such that it comes and takes over your screen. Oh, um, it's okay. It's okay now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, members. As we wrap up with this, we need to note some things. One of them is that there is the need to make use of the environment to make teaching learning materials. Let us make the environment, uh, let's make our, uh, our teaching aids environment, uh, environment uh, cost-effective, eh? cost like we can easily get them in the environment. Two, Some waste materials at home or school interesting. And a reminder, think about this in your subject. Recently, I was looking at our neighbor, our neighboring country, Kenya, where they have CBC ongoing, and it is really interesting. And here it is involving parents, teachers, students, and everyone is enjoying it. So we should not make this complicated. Let's use the materials. Probably you might find there are materials at home that we no longer want or materials in school that we are no longer needed, but can make our lesson interesting. We can think about it and do it. Then involve learners in preparing teaching, learning resources. When you involve the learners, the learners will like this curriculum I'm telling you. Let's involve our learners in preparing these resources so that we don't again be the, the center person of it all. Then above all, remind about the cross-cutting issues. Hey, let's be mindful about the cross-cutting issues when we are preparing all these resources. Thank you. I beg to submit, Mr. Rogers. Thank you. And on the cross-cutting issues, for example, if you are teaching agriculture and you tell learners, you go outside and bring leaves, they will go and they spoil the leaves in the environment. If they are going to use leaves in your lesson, make mm. sure that you have prepared those leaves from somewhere safe and they are mm. they brought maybe in some box, which they will use. Don't just say, don't go and break your branches. So you are not minding about the environment. Mm. That is the cross-casting issue. Mm. Mm. Okay, so yes. members now, uh, right now, um, uh, we are going to be having uh, our demo lessons. And uh, we are, there's something known as a, a monitoring tool. A monitoring tool, when you are observing in the new curriculum, actually they even encourage us to sometimes invite our teachers, our heads of departments, our, our colleagues, to observe, to sit behind there as the, we are teaching. So there are a number of points here. The, the head of the department or your colleague will be there to see whether uh, mm. you 
your learning outcomes are clear, you use the classroom language at the right level, you may be using a language which is like using that competency or some of those words. If the learner, senior learner doesn't have to hear that. And uh, you are linking the learners, the new learning to the learner's prior knowledge using the probing questions, whether you, you are interesting and engaging, whether you made good use of learning materials, whether you were content-based and tax-oriented, uh, whether you were learner-centered, whether there were a lot of activities and whether activities were arranged chronologically, and uh, uh, whether you achieved the, at the different levels of ability, and uh, activities were assessed in various ways, and uh, learner engagement was high, and you summed up the lesson. So these are some of the questions that you, uh, in the lesson monitoring tool. This lesson monitoring tool is also available on shareability. You can download it. And uh, it was shared with us during the NCDC trainings. OK, so um, there is a video here that I, I want us to play as Mr. The first person here is going to be um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Um, our teacher here is going to be teaching us chemistry. Um, Mr. Jerome is going to be the first person. Um, then he, we are going to look to, to see whether those lesson, those things, uh, whether the lesson was uh, really, uh, yeah, we are going to just look at uh, whether he has used the ICT integration and all those things. Yeah, so <clears throat> there is a video here that I want to just play, just, uh, it's just a two minute video. Uh, to guide the uh, the teachers as they do the les the demo lesson, um, let me play it, and from there we shall be we shall be going into it for the demo lesson. Hello and welcome to Teachings in Education, student centered learning. This is an instructional approach that places the focus on the students instead of the teacher. So let's begin with the overall goal of student-centered learning. Its mission is to create both independent and responsible learners for the future. Now, there are many positive benefits to using a student-centered classroom model. Research has shown that students learn how to express themselves and articulate their individual ideas. Teachers enjoy using this model because students are engaged in their work and on task. Students are constantly working. It's that students utilize higher order thinking skills through the inquiry-based learning and problem-solving activities. Also, students get to work at their own pace. Remember, it's the students that drive the lesson, not the teacher. Overall, students learn skills that are transferable and will help them adapt to life in the 21st century workplace. Now I'll ask, what does a student-centered classroom look like? As school administrators roam the room, they should see students working on assignments as the teacher facilitates. Students are allowed to explore their interests. You may see a student performing an experiment on one of their favorite chemistry topics. Students should be working together as a group and building upon each other's knowledge. Cooperative learning frequently takes place in the classroom. The student and teacher should be working hand in hand to achieve mutual learning goals. Here it is really a partnership in learning between the teacher and the student. Examples of student work should be found in the classroom. Students' projects are placed around the room, posters are hung on the wall, writing samples are there as well. Students are comfortable using technology in the classroom. Technology is used to help students solve problems, just like in real-world situations. A student-centered classroom is not a quiet place. Students should be debating ideas with one another. Students are given a voice and feel empowered. Teachers do this by providing their students with choice in their assignments. Now, let's finish up with some tips for the classroom. First off, try to teach, quote, big ideas to your students. Allow the students to discover the details of these big ideas for themselves. Teachers should give students a chance to evaluate their own learning. 
student reflections can be a part of a teacher's grading and assessments. Performance-based assessments and authentic assessments are also an integral component. These type of assessments are what we expect students to see in a real-world workplace environment. Teachers need to be constantly moving around the room as opposed to sitting at their desks. As a teacher wanders, they formatively assess students in a friendly way. Teachers can ask questions without grading students. Right now, I'd like to ask you to subscribe to this channel. And lastly, you can download resources in the description. Okay, thank you very much. Members, I hope it was clear. You Were you able to mm. listen to it? Yes. Okay. Okay, so uh, right now, um, uh, Mr. Jerome, are you ready? Ready, Sam. Uh, maybe let me also ask, do we have any student who has joined in? Um, if you're a student, you can put up your hand or you can mute and say, I'm a student. Um, okay. Cortez, how are you? And Joshi? I'm fine, teacher. Thank you. Okay, we are going to learn chemistry right now. Teacher Jerome, am I able to share your screen or you wanted me to share? I think I'm able to share or you wanted me to share? Let me first share and I see. Uh, you have students of senior one ready to learn. Okay, okay. Are you seeing my screen or view? Yes, sir. Okay. It's coming. Okay. It's no. coming. Mm -hmm. It has come. Yes. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, good evening, everyone here. Uh, evening, my, name is, uh, evening, my name is Jerome Harimimana. Uh, this is a, a lesson that we are going to run, but I'm sorry I, I was not able to edit this. It was an assignment. I was supposed to first customize this first page so that it becomes my lesson rather than my, my work. But uh, all in all, you understand that uh, the lesson you are going to run is a senior one lesson, and uh, I call upon you to, to actively participate in the lesson. So, me, Harimi Manager, is a teacher of chemistry and biology, and I have taught these two subjects for the last 12 years. Uh, I taught in Kabare, uh, I taught in Ntungamo, and currently I teach uh, at Kahindu SS in Fort Potro, but also go to Divine Masse Secondary School in the same district. So today, we are looking at the contribution of chemistry to the economy of Uganda. Uh, by the end of this lesson, we should be able to know how chemistry is contributing to the economy of Uganda. And our reference books will be the chemistry learners book and the, the teacher's guide book. So we are looking at the contribution of chemistry to the economy of Uganda. But in our previous lesson, we introduced chemistry. As senior ones, we came to senior one, but we found the chemistry. So before we proceed, we have to know what chemistry is. So in the previous lesson that we learned, we discovered that chemistry is a branch of science. Uh, students, can, my, can the students hear me? Yes. The students, are you hearing me? They are not hearing yes, me. Yes, sir. Okay. So in primary you. school, you started about science. Is there anyone who still remembers what you started about science in primary? Hello? Yes. Yes, what can you tell us about, uh, about uh, 
science. What did you define science as? That science is the study of living and non-living things. Thank you so much, uh, Joe, Josh and John. Uh, thank you so much for that contribution. So we are saying that the chemistry is one of the branches of science. When we come to secondary school, that is science being broad is divided into branches and chemistry is one of them. I want to remind you that we said that uh, chemistry is a branch of science which deals with how matter behaves under different conditions. So in, in brief, we are saying that chemistry is what happens to matter. Matter is a new word. Anybody who can tell us what matter is? Let me take other participants as students or so. Matter. Yes, Cortez? Matter is anything that occupies space and has waste. Matter, good. So we have a lot of things that occupy space here around us. Can you mention with where you are now, right now, four things which occupy space? Uh, they have mass and occupy space. Cortez. Can you mention at least three um, objects which occupy yes, space? Yes, tell me. Cortez, are you talking? Cortez, I'm not hearing you. Who is the next participant? Mr. Rogers, help me to identify the other participants. There are two, there are three. There is the Muhammad. Muhammad, please kindly tell us. The chair where I'm seated. The chair where you're seated, thank you so much. Uh -huh. The other participant? John, Josh, we John. Have, we have got tables where I put my laptop on. Tables. So uh, we are going to say matter. That uh, matter all, all around us, we have matter. All us, we have matter. I am hearing some, some. Mr. Roger, you want to share? It's okay. So all of us around us, we have matter and that matter behaves in a certain way when it is subjected to certain conditions. We can take, for example, when you get your table that you are seated on and you put it in a fire, it will not remain the table. It will turn into something else. We have other forms of matter. I am seated on uh, my sofa here. If I it, uh, it gets burnt, I, I bring fire, it will get burnt and it will turn to something else. So there are very many changes that uh, matter undergoes when it is subjected to certain conditions. And that is what chemistry deals with. So in other words, chemistry happens all around us. Chemistry is not very far from us. Wherever we are, there is chemistry which takes place because matter is there and we are always seeing it changing. So while we are discussing our first lesson, we also said that chemistry is studied in a special room called a laboratory. So in the picture there, you are seeing a nice room which has some components. Members, so where our students are still on, what can you observe in that room? Students, what can you observe in that room? Hello? Yes, teacher. What can we observe? Yes, can yes teacher. Observe? Yes, please. Talk to me. Cortes, are you Cortes? Yes, I can observe some. 
you can observe. Yes, I can't get you, but in the laboratory- Yes, teach, I, can, yes I can see jerry cans, uh, yes, mini good. jerry cans. Yes. You can also observe people, smart, Hello? smart, smart men and ready. You can observe- I can them. observe mini jerry cans. Yes, please. Yes, thank you. Thank you for your contribution, Cortez. So in that is a special room where chemistry as a science subject is studied. But chemistry is even outside that special room because even at our homes, we have chemistry. We have a lot of matter that undergoes different things. We use a lot of uh, chemicals in our homes. We use salt, we even food we eat. We have a lot of matter that can change. We have our books in our, at our school. We have plastics, all of those are things where chemistry is required. So we are going to watch our short video here, uh, which is telling us about the role played by chemistry in our society. We shall find out that certain things which we never knew that are chemistry are actually chemistry. And we shall see that wherever you go, wherever you are, you will find chemistry. And if you go somewhere and don't see chemistry, chemistry will have seen you. So let us watch this video. Let us watch this short video very quickly. Listen carefully as we watch the video. My name is Yaruhanga Bonaventure from National Curriculum Development Center, together with my colleague, John from Uganda Sign Language. We are going to have a lesson in chemistry and our topic is chemistry and society. Good. I believe you remember the meaning of chemistry. What is the chemistry? The study of the changes in matter. Matter is all around us. But let us put it this way. During this lesson, we shall identify the different products made as a result of the study of chemistry. And also, we shall identify different careers related to chemistry. Good. Let us do it this way. Let us begin by looking around ourselves, whether we are at home, whether we are in the garden, whether we are, wherever we are, let us look around ourselves and identify as many objects, as many materials, as many substances as we can get. Let us identify as many objects around us and maybe list, list them. All right. I think you have seen soap, maybe a glass of water, pour water in a container, another container. We have our book, a pen, a cup, and many other objects. That's good. Somebody says they have seen a sanitizer, toothpaste, colgate, some of us call it colgate, and many other objects and many other substances. All of these are made as a result of using the knowledge of chemistry. So we can say that the knowledge of chemistry is very important for us. We use it to prepare, to manufacture a variety of objects, a variety of materials that we use in everyday life. Good. Can you imagine 
if there was no chemistry. The sanitizers we are using to fight the deadly coronavirus, the soap we are using to wash our hands regularly, are all a result of the knowledge of chemistry. I think the world would even be worse in a worse situation than we are now if there was no knowledge of chemistry. Excuse me, teacher. Yes, Mr. Rogers. Teacher, we have only five minutes to our next lesson. Okay, okay. Let me wind up. I think this video has given us a highlight of how chemistry would contribute to the economy of Uganda. We are seeing a number of items which we actually go and buy, we pay money for. They are manufactured, it's probably some of the factories that we know. So this one highlights to us that the chemistry has a lot that it contributes in terms of the economic gain of this country. So I would wish that in our discussion, in our next discussion, we take an example from what teacher Bonaventure has been demonstrating to us to look at the different ways in which chemistry has helped Uganda to develop. And in fact, I would say that the other nations have used chemistry to develop and they have gone beyond us because of the way they applied. We have applied chemistry to a less extent and we are still developing. And I'm sure that when we use more of the chemistry, this country will get more economic gains from the chemistry. So we go to the next slide. We are saying that the chemistry is a, as a discipline is a very significant contributor to the wealth, prosperity, and health of humanity, of humanity because of some of the things you have seen there. And uh, we are saying when this country uses chemistry, the future will be bright. So I, I, I am asking this, I, I am not going to group you, but uh, each member is going to contribute. That the teachers, the teachers, in your subject, you tell me one thing that is done and you find that really, if this one was not chemistry, this item would not be there. I use it or I look at it, it is in my area of specialization, but it is from the area of chemistry. Then the runners, the runners you are going to tell me the different forms of industries or factories where chemistry is applied, or where products are produced and they use the knowledge of chemistry. So you can tell me the industry and the products that are produced there. I think we start now, let us use three minutes only to do that. Yes, see Joe, Josh and John. Talk we to me. Mokwano. Mokwano, Mokwano. What, what products? They manufacture these plastic plates like- Yes, good. Even metal, they manufacture plastic, plastic products. Yes, please. Uh huh. Mr. Rogers, Which, help me identify other so that I go next to them. Yes, please. You are still talking. Hello. Marion. Marion, you talk to me. In your subject, Marion, you teach fine art. What things do you find there? And you say, you say chemistry should be appreciated for this. Uh, in my subject, my subject is agriculture. Yes, yes, okay. My subject is agriculture, and I think chemistry is widely used in agriculture, in manufacture of fertilizers, herbicides, uh, pesticides, among other chemicals. So it is widely used. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Marian. Uh -huh. We go to other contributors. Other members, please, in your subjects, entrepreneurship, ICT. Entrepreneurship. <laughs> ICT and mathematics. 
Hello. Maybe food and, food and nutrition. Me. Members contribution. Is Muhammad? He has put his hand up. I don't know. Mr. Muhammad. Yes. Good evening, members. Yes, you're welcome. No, no, no. Me as a teacher of ICT and computer studies. Yes, please. If it was in chemistry, yeah. the computers wouldn't show exact time and date because uh, for, the, for the computers to display time and date, it is a support of Decimus battery, which is Decimus battery. Yes, thank you. And also, uh, all and those items, the, the metals and nanometals there, all those are chemistry objects. You have second Jaco Muhammad, you yes. see the one? Okay. Uh, uh, I see. It's me over the hand. Okay, okay. I'm lowering mm -hmm. the hand, yeah. Okay. Other subjects, mathematics. All teachers should be able to do this because I know we have been facing runners in class and we're using a chalkboard and chalk. Huh? When you are using a chalk, what are you using? You are using a, a, chemistry, a chemistry thing. That chalk is calcium carbonate. So that is still chemistry. So Marion. No... Marion, yeah. Yes, uh, in mathematics, even a calculator the teacher uses, I think it has batteries, it has and those batteries, batteries contain chemicals. Then entrepreneurship, uh, those people who 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 uh, participate in selling ke uh, chemicals, who put up pharmacies, shops for selling chemicals, I think they also apply some. They also need the chemistry. Yeah, without chemistry, they cannot say those things. Thank you so much, Mary. I, I make my contribution, teacher. <laughs> okay. You... Teacher, let me make my contribution in biology. Yes, please. You are welcome. Bring it. You are... Okay. Agnes, Agnes from Kabale. <laughs> yes, Agnes, please. please, please, welcome. In chemistry, when we are carrying out... Uh, sorry, in biology, carrying out food tests, we use yes, solutions please. like sodium hydroxide, copper two okay. sulfate. We use the test tubes, the beakers, all that is chemistry. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that wonderful contribution, Agnes from Kavari. Okay. okay. Any other member who is still having a burning, burning contribution? Teachers have not con have not contributed to their subjects. Uh, CRI has not given me any contribution, but Jesus turned water into what? Into wine. The wine. <laughs> okay, and Mr. That Jerome, was... let us proceed. <laughs> okay, so we are now going to look at these, all these uh, uh, sectors that can actually help our country to develop more and more if we actually understood that uh, they contribute a lot in terms of economic gains, in terms of money. We are looking at the, how chemistry brings in or takes away money from us. And this we could look at actually what we import and what we export. What do we import? Are they chemicals or yes? Yes, they are chemicals. If they are not chemicals, probably they should be services. So if we import the things, who is making them? The person who is making them, who is making food, who is making fertilizers, who is making uh, batteries, phones, all of that is using the knowledge of chemistry and it gets money from us. So if we could be making them, we would be the people uh, that are getting this money. So we go to the next slide very quickly and we rush through this. The sectors, we agree that there is a lot of chemistry in processing of agricultural products, coffee, tea, if you have gone to those industries or factories, those who are near, there is Mukwano here in Fort Potro, there is Mabari tea, uh, they use a lot of chemistry, 
food chemistry and production, we have bread, we have cheese, we have uh, baby foods, different types of food that we buy from supermarkets and the food stores, they have, there is a lot of chemistry there. Uh, then drinks and beverages, those who enjoy drinks, members, you remember that you have common drinks here that are produced by strong industries that actually gain a lot of money. If you look at Nile breweries, you look at Pepsi Cola, you look at Coca Cola, all those, they use a lot of knowledge of chemistry, but uh, most people don't appreciate. They actually put all the all the benefits to these people who count the money. The economists and the and the, the shopkeepers they think they are the people who have made them. Yet without chemistry, those drinks and beverages could not be there. If you have gone to Tororo or Himas. Hello, teacher Jerome. Teacher Jerome, are you hearing us? Okay. Okay, uh, members. Okay, members, because of time, I think um, teacher Jerome was almost through. I wanted him to conclude, but uh, yeah, I think he has got he has gone off a bit. Yeah, but it's fine. So, uh, for the students, please, I want to thank the students who have been able to join us for that demo lesson. Uh, I hope you liked it and you have learned something from it. Uh, so, we are now going to be using around fifteen minutes to wrap up with this session with the teachers. Uh, the students, uh, Josh, uh, Cortez, I saw even other students, please, thank you very much for joining in uh, for that session. Uh, so uh, the teachers, the rest of the teachers, this was actually the last slide where the teacher was. And the last slide was about, thank you for attending. And the next time uh, we'll be discussing experimental chemistry. So uh, Madam Kellen, what is your... What is your first reaction to this lesson? As this teacher, uh, this is the chemistry teacher. How is this lesson? Uh, and other teachers, please, you can react a bit. How, is, how was the lesson prepared? And um, how many marks would you give? Mr. Sendege, let me start with you. How many marks would you give Mr. Jerome for this lesson out of 10? Thank you so much, Mr. Rogers. Uh, in one way or the other, I would like also to thank Mr. Joram for the lesson conducted. Actually, I've seen him using technology in class via having that video. Uh, in one way or the other, I would award him a seven out of 10, because you may find that however much learners were engaged, but we didn't see something like a uh, discussion among learners. So the involvement of learners was a little bit limited. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. So members, um, there is this monitoring tool which I told you earlier. I hope you can see it. So when you are, we invite teachers to uh, monitor your lesson. Uh, when you when you invite teachers to monitor your lesson, then you keep ticking. Um, teacher made the learning outcomes clear. Yes or no? Uh, you can admit and tell me yes or no. Were the learning outcomes clear? Uh, we are marking him. Marion. Yes, please. Were the learning outcomes clear, yes or no? I think yes. Okay. Did the teacher use clear classroom language? 
Um, yes. Okay. Did the teacher link the new learning to the learner's prior knowledge? Uh, Rashida? Hey. Did the, learner, the teacher link the learners to prior, prior knowledge? Yes. Okay. Uh, was the int introduction interesting? Okay, so members, because of time, we would go through all this uh, monitoring tool, and then we see that uh, this teacher taught a good lesson. Um, I can see, according to what I'm seeing here, the introduction of the teacher was there. Um, the activities were content-based and tax-oriented. There was an activity where we were supposed to go in the groups, but I think because of time, the teacher couldn't make the learners to go in groups, but they were supposed to go in groups. But because of time, he feared that uh, he couldn't go there. Okay, so Mr. Sandegia said there was no group engagement. The teacher made good use of learning materials. The learning materials were those ones he was telling us in the lab. I don't know whether those are the learning materials, but um, even a video. I think the video is also a learning material. The video? Mm -hmm. That is ICT then, integration. Yeah. Yeah, it's ICT integration, but it, it is also um, even ICT is a tool. Yeah. Anyway, so what of this do you think mm. the teacher never did? Um, the teacher has not closed the, the lesson, maybe because of <laughs> even power, time. even the time. Uh, the participation he tried, and um, activities were assessed. So, members, that is the, the monitoring tool that you would use to monitor. Now, because of time, we are not going to have another demo lesson. We are only going to have this one. And um, we are going to be uh, continuing and we wrap up with our training um, today. So we have had a, a demo lesson. The teacher has used more than 20 minutes. So the time, the time was caught him. And uh, we have also managed to get observers and we have monitored the lesson. So this is a wrap up. <laughs> when delivering a competence-based curriculum, uh, it requires the teacher to prepare. So like in this case, by the way, even in the new curriculum, if we have things like projectors, we can use them to deliver our lessons using PowerPoint. We don't decide how to use the Blackboard. We can use PowerPoint and we deliver our lessons. And developing a scheme of work and a lesson plan is very important because it will guide you. And in the lesson plan, take care of the the, the key learning outcomes, the, the cross-cutting issues, the values, make sure that you prepare what the learners are going to use. And also the classroom arrangement is part of the lesson plan. It's advisable to put learners in a sitting arrangement that allows them to communicate, collaborate, and share. So if you are using Zoom, you may have to use groups. For example, break away sessions. If he had told me to break away, I would have broken away, for example. Okay, so basically that is the end of our lesson there. Members, this brings us to the end of our seven day workshop on demystifying the curriculum. In case you missed any, in case you missed, in case you missed any of the, in case you missed any of the, videos and the sessions, please, we have a YouTube channel, icttteachersug.net. You can visit, you can share these lessons with all other teachers who have missed the training. The videos are going to be there throughout forever. Uh, so you can always refer and uh, let them learn. Then we also have a Google Classroom. All the materials are still there. The presentations, including this one, are going to be uploaded and are already there. 
for all the seven days we have been having the training. These materials are there for you. Please, you can refer. So at this time, I want you to ask any questions. On our part as ICT teachers, we have demystified the curriculum. So in case you have any questions or you want to appreciate, to give us a vote of thanks, uh, you are welcome. Come, you can even turn on your camera and you uh, share what you you share something something from what you have learned here. And uh, Mr. Jerome, you are welcome. We have been analyzing your lesson. I think you came a bit late. Yeah, you had to break off Finished and uh, analyzing you. Okay, so members, we are through with our training. Uh, you can uh, unmute. We are having uh, these ten minutes. You can be able to share in general how the training was, and uh, we are going to be concluding with our training. But let me give Madam Kellen also a chance. She can be able to say final remarks there, and uh, thank the members for attending. Um, I can see Madam Agnes has already turned on her camera. You can go ahead if you want to share something. Uh, mine is appreciation. So ICT teachers, thank you, you have done it very well. For all the seven days, taking us through, demystifying the new curriculum, competence-based, I say it has been good, though I've missed uh, some like two sessions. So I'm happy that you have guided us on how we shall access them. I thank you so much and all the members for having attended this workshop. Thank you so much. Good evening. Thank you, Agnes. We are very glad to hear from you uh, that you have found this beneficial. And we hope the new curriculum is demystified on your end. Okay, let us get another person. Um, another person, please. Uh, I want to hear from each of the members here. You can unmute. Quickly, quickly, and then we continue. Uh, Sharif Nyombi. Okay, Mr. Sendegia, if I call you and uh, you take minutes without responding, means you are not ready. Mr. Sendegia. Mr. Rogers, thank you so much. I would also like to add my voice. Uh, to thank ICT teachers for such arrangement, to have teachers at least uh, knowing what to do when it comes to senior one. But my question is, according to achievement record chart, are we supposed to develop hours or they are going to send to us the record achievement chart? Because already some teachers in senior one, they carried out activities of integration. So is it our responsibilities to ensure that we can produce them or they will work upon them and then they send them? Thank you so Reporting much. to what? Reporting to the parents? Yeah, basically. And even for record purposes to be sent to UNEB. Yeah, for, for UNEB, uh, the results are going to be submitted through the UNEB portal the way we normally uh, submit registration for candidates, their photos and everything. We, it is going to be submitted through ICT, but the uh, ministry is going to guide that when uh, senior schools resume and uh, the year is ending as they are going to senior two, guidance is going to be given. Um, then for the report card for parents, it is open. The schools can design report cards but they don't design them like the old ones. This time they should focus on levels and uh, they have not, they show uh, activity of integration. For example, if you have taught about use of materials, we expect a chemistry teacher to show that the, the learner has achieved most of the learning outcomes in about using materials in chemistry or the learner needs more support. So the, the report card should be more of talking than Max should be more qualitative than quantitative should be more of like the report card of nursery than the report card which we're having so that is what is going to be there there are some companies that some developers who are already making report card systems for the new curriculum 
and schools should be ready to, to use any and revoke their own as well. Okay, thank you, Mr. Senegal. I hope I've answered your question. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, let us hear from uh, Mr. Mohammed. Okay, Rashida. Tedris. Uh, thank you for the opportunity that you have uh, given us to share with us about new curriculum. Uh, uh, what picked most uh, lesson that was about um, marks that we get from the activity of integration. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Rashida, for those remarks. Uh, let us hear from. Um, um, we have. Uh, uh, Marion Naluanga. Yes, uh, I hope everyone can hear me. Yes. Uh, Members, you can me. turn on your camera if you are not. If you are if fine with you, you can turn on your camera. But if not, then you, you remain. It's okay. Uh, it's not okay with me. Okay. Uh, uh, I admit I've not been all that consistent with the meetings, first of all, but I've been following via YouTube. I've tried to follow the training and I extend you no know, many thanks to Mr. To all the trainers. Let me not be specific. I extend you no know, many thanks to you uh, for giving us the time to let us go through this training. I think uh, it has added or oh, it is going to add us a lot of knowledge and skills in as far as conducting lessons, preparing for lessons, all activities concerning with classroom, classroom work is concerned. Uh, uh, I think you. that's all. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marion. Okay, uh, let us hear from Kennedy, then we shall hear from Jerome. Let us hear from Jerome. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Rogers. Uh, I want to join the rest of the members to thank members of the town for giving us this opportunity to, to have this training. It has indeed been enriching, and I know we have not gone back the same. And in fact, we are going to help some people too. Um, as a person, I have gained a lot, and uh, I want to say that these trainings are very important, Mr. Rogers. I attended an interview, and a question on new curriculum was compulsory for everyone at any level. These members of Education Service Commission were asking questions on the new curriculum, these generic skills. And we members never knew these things. And you could do, you never know. Lack of knowledge of the new curriculum could contribute to someone failing to go through. And I am very happy that you have got this. So I was saying, Mr. Rogers, this is a request. You had told us that you're not going to issue certificates. But those certificates are very, very important. When you present them to these people on an interview, they can weigh a lot. So let our presence here be measured. And probably I request members, let us complete the assignments so that maybe Mr. Rogers and the group can change their, their stand and they offer some certificates that you can present once we go for these interviews. They can add us something, Mr. Rogers. Please think about it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jerome. Yeah, and also for the demo lesson. I, I remember as Mr. Mr. Jerome here is uh, one of the teachers who has done almost all the assignments. We are going to be updating the Google Classroom and publishing the other materials which are left and also marking uh, some of the assignments. 
Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Jerome, for the session and um, attending. Yeah, we are. We, I, I, let us see. Let us see what we can do. And um, uh, thank you very much for that. Okay, I'm um, having uh, like three members left. Uh, there is Geoffrey Namisi, Onyango Mark. Anyone can go. Namisi and Onyango. Anyone can unmute. Yes. Namisi. Okay, Namisi, you are unable to speak. Your audio is poor. Okay, maybe, maybe the audio is poor. Okay, now go ahead. I My network hear. is not so. So, I think that great thanks to the organizers of this program. I just want to encourage other teachers to really join the ICT teachers for their innovations and try to improve themselves. It is actually a good venture where you have failed to understand certain concepts. Through this kind of class, you can learn a lot. And I'm sure the children we are going to teach will be better in terms of understanding what we are going to deliver. Because sometimes the CDC does not give enough time to demystify some of the concepts. But here we have had a good time. There's a lot of examples, a lot of sharing, and I feel it is a good idea. And I encourage you that how I wish to encourage the other more teachers to join. So that we're not only 15, 18, the way I see the turn up and so we, we would be like 200 plus in order to, to really benefit our teachers so much. Otherwise, I'm so grateful and I wish all of you the best. Thank you. Thank you very much for those remarks. Hey, uh, yeah, we last year from 2020 actually NCDC has organized trainings. And even right now, actually, as I'm talking, I've reported for another training here in Uganda, which is going to be going on up to Saturday. And other PTCs, like I, and I we shared the news yesterday. So only that sometimes our teachers, when they go for these workshops, they you want to just get allowance. So they go there, they're not even attending very well, but then CGC tries and does the, what they can do. And uh, the other one is seven days full time, you are there physically. This one has just been one hour in the evening. So only that here, maybe the videos are there, you can revisit when you have missed. Yeah, but the physical trainings, when they are on, please attend. And uh, I think they are going to continue even in the coming years. And uh, those of us who have got the knowledge, like in the first day, we saw the NCDC director told us that we need to share with others. That's why as ICT other session we say, let us also have some discussions on the same as we share, uh, even with those who never attended. Okay, our members, I think we are through. Any other person who has not spoken? One or two? Onyango, have you spoken? <laughs> Thank you so much. I believe. Are you hearing me? Yes. Yeah, I said thank you so much, Mr. Rogers and the Itao team. Uh, I believe you have sacrificed so much to, 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 to really help us in this uh, forum. No, no one has ever thought of it, but the Tao team started. I believe this one is a very, very, very big virtual uh, staff room that we have already started. And each and every information that a teacher needs to have, I believe we are going to get it here. Much as we are calling today as the last for the demystifying of this CBC. I would feel that any sort of training again that is going to come, we are still coming in the same forum, 
using the same WhatsApp that we have already created. And we try to, to, to really uh, make ourselves more of computer literate. Because I believe in the first uh, sort of edify training, I believe one person saying that uh, technology has not come to replace a teacher, but any teacher who is not using technology is already replaced. <laughs> I feel each and every one of us should now embrace technology. Whether we like it or not, it's already a must. I feel if we go by that, sir, you will have helped us a lot. Thank you so much. OK, thank you very much. Yeah, members, we are having a WhatsApp group um, that we created also for this demystifying. We are going to continue in touch. In case you want to join it, um, the link was um, the link is actually in, in the Google Classroom. When you go to the stream, you will see somewhere I posted that link, so you can be able to join. Um, but also for those who are on this call. I'm sharing the, the link right now. I'm sharing it in the chat uh, for that group. So we can continue sharing resources now from this uh, that I'm in. When I get some resources, it can be shared. Uh, I, I, we shall be continuously sharing. Yeah, so there's this group called Demystifying the CBC. Uh, you can join it. But also in the other groups of Edify and Itau, even if you are there, it's fine. We shall continue sharing everywhere yeah so that is what i, I wanted to say there on, in reaction to that uh, madam uh, kellen are you able to give now the final remarks madam kellen uh, is able to un unmute if she can't unmute then uh, we are going to have someone yes madam kellen your final word I unmute. Yeah, final word. We are can hear you now. I hope everyone, no one have left behind who has not spoken. Madam Kellen. Can I speak now? Yes, speak. Please go ahead. Then we are going to get someone to give us a closing prayer. Uh, Madam Kellen, yes, Madam Kellen, give your final remark, and then we have someone to give us a closing prayer. You go ahead. I I want to thank ICT teachers of Uganda for this initiative. Thank you very much. And uh, I want to thank our sponsors, all our sponsors that encouraged us to do this. I want to thank our facilitators, especially you, Mr. Mukarele. You've, you have you have done a lot you have you you have put in a lot of a lot of effort for this workshop to to be a success as it has been and we want to thank you and other fellow facilitators for their input for their energy and for their participation uh, on the other hand, I also want to thank our participants from day one. You've been so good. You have, you have, you have, uh, uh, you have attended with us from day one up to the last day. We don't take it for granted. Thank you. And uh, because of you, we have been able to demystify this curriculum, and we believe that the, 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 the gospel will not stop here. We request that as we go out there, as they open the schools, 
We continue preaching the gospel of the new curriculum to our fellow teachers. We return fellow teachers in this new curriculum so that really this new curriculum becomes a success. I beg to submit. Thank you very much, Madam Kevin. And members, the materials, there is the slides we have shared with you. So you don't have an excuse. You can always visit the Google Classroom and share the detail you download and you, you use them to teach your fellow teachers. Okay, let us have someone to give us a closing prayer. Closing prayer, anyone ready to give us a closing prayer? Marion? Okay. okay. Let us, I think, when it's humble weather, uh, let us get ready with the prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for the session we have, we have gone through. Thank you for the trainers. We thank you for the gift of life. And The for the curriculum, the competence based curriculum. It's a pleasure that we are going to continue spreading this score of the competence based curriculum. And it's our prayer also that even the teachers who are unaware about this curriculum can also get it. We pray that to guide us, to give us a Amen. 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 Thank, Thank you. you very much, members. And uh, mm, bye bye, you, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Have a nice. Uh, Mr. Onyango Kumu, bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. Mm. Bye, 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 bye. Okay. Bye-bye, <laughs> bye-bye, bye-bye, everyone. Mm. God bless you.